And then when we click send message, it's going to appear here in the channel as if the bot sent it. There you go. Hello there, and welcome to this tutorial on how to make a Slack bot using Mendix. If you're a developer and you're watching this, or even if you just work in an office, you'll probably know what Slack is. A cool feature about Slack is that they have a public API, which can be used for free to build and publish bots. So let's get started with this, the first in a three-part series about how to make Slack bots using Mendix and published REST services or HTTP methods. I tried to make it in one video, but it grew a bit long. Straight to it. In this series, I'm going to be covering three basic topics about Slack bots. The first part we'll cover in this video, and that's going to be simply sending a message as your bot. The second video will be on how to set up and subscribe your bot to channel events. Channel events are when a user says or does something in a Slack channel. The third and final section we will cover is Slash commands. Those are when a user enters a specific keyword into Slack, preceded by a forward slash. This will trigger a specific function in Slack, which will post messages to a unique endpoint. But all that is to come in the next two parts. For now, let's jump in and send our first message. The only things you're going to need for this part is Mendix Studio Pro and a Slack workspace you have access to as an admin. If you don't have one, no worries. We're gonna do one together now. To get started, just go to app.slack.com and we're gonna set up a new workspace. To do this, we just have to give it a name uh, we'll call this bot space one uh, and select that and click next. Give it a topic, which is bots, bots, bots. So here is our workspace and we have a channel called bots, bots, bots. To get started creating our bot, we can go to api.slack.com. I'll put the full URL in here. So once you're in api.slack.com, click create new app. We're gonna choose from scratch. Give your app a name, we'll call it Mendix Bot. Pick a workspace, bot space one and then we can create the app. Once your app has been created, you can go to OAuth and permissions. It's in the left-hand menu over here. And what we want is we want to install this to the workspace. If we mouse over it, you'll see we need at least one permission scope to install this app. Um, so all we have to do is scroll down the page. You'll see here bots token scopes underneath scopes and we're gonna add an OAuth scope. Now we want some specific ones, you can add all of them if you want, but the ones we need specifically are chat, uh, chat rights. And if you want to add a message to a public channel, you have to say chat right public. Um, that's the only ones we need for now. So let's scroll back up. We can now install to workspace. You'll notice that it is no longer disabled. Uh, you have to allow it. And there you go, we have our bot user OAuth token. You're going to know it's a bot token if it starts with X, O, X, B, and then a dash, and then your token value. Um, you can't see mine because it's blurred out. Um, get your own token. So once you have that, we can use it along with the channel ID to send a message to the channel as a bot. To do this, I have a simple Mendix app prepared um, to send this message using Slack's API. So this is the home page. I don't have security enabled or anything, um, but it's just a home page. Um, it has a little message holder, which is just a empty object, which is being returned by a data source. And that accepts a channel ID and a message. Now you can set this channel ID to be stored in um, the database or in a constant or something like that. I just did it like this so it's easier to demonstrate. So what we will have to do is add a method here to send this message using Slack's API. This build will work in almost any traditional programming stack capable of using HTTP methods or REST calls. 
like Java, JavaScript, Python, etc. You can even try it out in Postman um, before you start developing your app. All we need to do is integrate the API for posting messages. So to send your first message to the service, um, we can go into this button here, send message. Now I have a simple microflow set up here and it's just taking the message from the UI as a parameter and we're then getting the Slack bot configuration here in the database. So this is going to create the, well, retrieve the Slack config. If it's not found, we're going to create it. And this is just going to be created with our bot token. Okay. So that is going to return our config, which we can now use in our Slack call. All right. Next up, we're going to add a rest consume method. So we want to call a rest service. Now this has a few things to set up. Namely, we will have to set the location, the method. We need some headers and we need a request. There's also a response, but we don't need to deal with that right now. So the first thing we're going to do is set the location. The location we need to use for this is slack.com forward slash API chat dot post message. Paste that in. All right, then the HTTP method we need, you can see it's a post message. So we need to set it to post. The rest of this isn't really necessary. We can worry about the HTTP headers next. So for the headers, we're going to ignore the authentication headers up here and we're going to do two custom HTTP headers. So the first one we're going to add is content type spelled like this case sensitive. And the value for that is going to be application slash JSON. Now the next one we're going to set is authorization. So for that, we're just going to spell authorization. And the value for this is going to be bearer spelled correctly with a white space, close off the quotes, and then we can provide our Slack config and the bot token we saved earlier. Right, click OK there. And that is all the headers we need for that. The next thing we need to set is the request body. Now, there is a API doc for this. You can go and look and there's quite an extensive body that you can send. What I'm going to be sending is the most stripped back plain request body you can. And that is just channel with placeholder and then text also with placeholder. Now, these placeholders are coming from our values over here. Now, just add some parameters for the placeholders and that channel is going to come from the message uh, slash channel ID. And the text we're going to send is again on the message slash message. So again, there's a whole bunch of options here. I really recommend you go to the Slack documentation pages and check out all of the stuff you can do here. It's very interesting. Finally, you can handle the response. There is a response that comes back. You can do some error handling or retries on that, um, but it's not important for now. So I'm just going to click OK and we can run our app and test it out. Once your app is running to test the message, you will need your channel ID. So click view app and we're gonna see our simple application here. I will open it up in split screen. And here's our channel over here. Okay, so to test our bot, we're going to just need the channel ID, which you can get from the URL of the channel itself. It's the last value. So copy that, paste it there. And then we just need to type a message. So we're just gonna say hello from Mendix bot. And this even supports emojis. So you can do something like wave and hit enter. And then when we click send message, it's going to appear here in the channel as if the bot sent it. There you go. 
hello from Mendixpod. That's it for this episode, but stay tuned for the next two parts which will follow soon. In the next one, I'll show you how to set up and subscribe your bot to events in the channel, including authentication and how to build out a simple conversation flow using Mendix. See you there.